all right guys uh Fulu coming to you with another video um so it looks like that there may be some more information that uh we're not being disclosed uh with this uh ukraine situation that the united snakes of america of course is good at hiding you know um the united snakes of america is the master of misinformation you know um and so you have to like really do some digging to look for the, the truth of the matter in some of these situations. So this is not, um, this is not like really, uh, this is not really, uh, this is not really like something that you should do, you know? Um, so You always have to look at the different um, different sources in regards to these uh, in the in regards to this information, because for for the most part, I don't believe what CNN says. I don't believe what uh, the BBC says. I don't believe what um, MSNBC says. I don't believe what Fox News says. And sometimes I have trouble believing what, what Al Jazeera says. So let's first get into the um, into the um, what has to do with me. Um, it seems like colonials lism always repeats itself um so you know back in the colonial days what happened is um you know you would have brothers going against brothers sometimes um especially in the portuguese uh conflict and when we wanted freedom right when we wanted our independence when we wanted sovereignty when we wanted self-determination in guinea bissau and cabo verde Unfortunately, you had, um, you know, African mercenary troops who would enlist under the Portuguese banner. And to make matters worse, most of their aggression was taken against their own African brothers. And on top of that, the Portuguese did not give a crap about them. If an African was wounded, they would just leave him wounded to die. You know what I mean? Um, now, another thing, too, is that that kind of led to repercussions because it got to a point where uh, the the organization, the PAIGC, which was leading the independence movement, it would just take it would retaliate sometimes. And it, I think it fixed this uh, this problem, but it would retaliate on innocent like villages. You know what I mean? that maybe had nothing to do with uh, collaboration with the Portuguese, but were just suspected of collaborating with them. So unfortunately that had a like adverse effect, unfortunately. Um, now, however, um, well, let's look at another situation. You had, um, you had the, the Italians who would enlist uh, people from East Africa to fight in Libya, you know, against Libyans. Uh, you know, one of the guys who was Libya in Libya leading the independence movement, his name was Omar al Mokhtar, and he was leading the independence movement against the Italians, right? Now, um, now we fast forward um and now it shows that there are that ukraine is actually trying to enlist africans to fight in ukraine you know they're trying to do that um it, it's um it, they're trying to do it from these african countries and why would african countries want to fight from with uh, Ukraine, like when they see how their own citizens are being treated over there, 
That makes no sense. Like, make it make sense, please. Now, um, now, it says, uh, Russia's war on Ukraine. I'm reading the article. It's from DW. Russians war on Ukraine is barely two weeks old, but Kiev is already attracting potential foreign fighters from as far as way as Kenya. If you pray, uh, and unfortunately this guy is just like a damn, you know, he's a mercenary. I mean, mercenaries work for the highest bidder, so it is what it is. But here's what he said. If Ukraine decides to pay me a very good amount of money, which I cannot earn here, I will definitely go there and fight. This is a guy from uh, Kenya. When we go there and then the war ends before anything happens, I will come back to Kenya and be a millionaire. But that's not, you don't know if you're going to come back. You don't know if it's going to happen like that. You don't know when the war's, war is going to end. So you do have, unfortunately, Africans who want to entertain this and it sucks. If I, and, and it's due to infrastructure in Africa that they want to entertain this. So you had, and this largely has to do with what Africa is going through, you know. Um, I would rather die on the front line in Ukraine knowing that my family will be compensated even after my death rather than die in Kenya from depression because of the insane unemployment rate. It goes back to the country, you know. But why would you want to fight for a Nazi country, you know? Um, so African nationals might see an economic opportunity from participating in this conflict. Uh, the reward could potentially come from being um, Ukraine uh, from being granted Ukrainian citizenship or being provided some financial compensation for participating in the conflict on behalf of Ukrainian forces. But it's not going to keep you from the racism that you will receive in your service there and after the service there and even before the service there. Um. So the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Nigeria issued a stern warning that the Nigerian, Nigeria has been drawn to allege ongoing registration of Nigerian volunteers into the fighting force of Ukraine at the Ukrainian embassy in Abuja. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs contacted the embassy to verify the speculation. The Ukrainian embassy refuted this allegation but confirmed that a number of Nigerians have approached the embassies indicating their willingness to fight on the side of Ukraine in this ongoing conflict with Russia. Chances are most of them are Igbos as well. Uh, clarify the Ukrainian government is not admitting foreign volunteers and as such dis dis oh, disassociated itself from the claim uh, that it is requesting 1,000 from East uh, Nigerian volunteer for an air ticket and a visa. But I don't believe them though. I don't believe Ukraine. I think they are like recruiting. That's just my thought. I, I do believe that they are recruiting. You know, I don't I don't put it past them. So let's see. Okay, now let's get to Senegal. Let's get to my neck of the woods. Senegal has also expressed the displeasure in Ukraine government saying that at least 30 people in Senegal were ready to confront Russian forces. <coughs> DW tried to reach some of the volunteers but was unsuccessful. Senegal's foreign affairs ministry said it was astonished to learn 
that the Ukrainian embassy in Dakar, Dakar and had posted an appeal on his Facebook page for foreign citizens to come to Ukraine's military defense. In a statement, the Senegalese government criticized the initiative and warned its citizens that recruiting volunteers and mercenary or foreign fighters on Senegalese soil is illegal. Although the embassy in Senegal has since deleted this Facebook post, the willingness of some young Africans to fight in Ukraine raises questions about their profiles and motivations. These young people want to get involved in Ukraine have not fully considered political or religious implications, says Serene Bamba J, a researcher on peace, security, and governance at the U.S.-based Peace Operations Training Institute. They are only interested in answering call without perhaps understanding the issues surrounding the Ukrainian conflict. Now, I'm going to speak on my behalf. I'm going to speak on my behalf real quick. <clears throat> I've been approached to fight in the United States or, or to be uh, recruited into the United States military many of times. I politely declined it. The reason being, I would never fight for any United States cause whatsoever. I would not even enlist myself in the Portuguese or the French um, military service. The only time I would fight, okay, is if either Senegal, Guinea-Bissau, or Cabo Verde had a conflict against uh, Tubacobe in Senegal or in Bissau or in Cabo Verde and they had they needed help to get them off the land if like say one of these places had a foreign enemy be it they had it like uh, the Portuguese the French the the Americans I would go there and fight them you know what I mean that's the only time I would go there and fight you know I would fight on behalf of uh the guerrilla guerrilla uh troops of my respected um origins you know what i mean but other than that i'm personally not getting involved in any western conflict you know i don't want to sound like i'm romanticizing but a part of me um a part of me does want to live out what my dad lived out as he was a guerrilla fighter and at the same time he was like you know, quite as it's kept in the PAIGC, there were many Muslim fighters. There was Muhammadu Jallo, there was Umaru Jallo, there was, uh, you know, Seko Balde, there was Bubukar Bari, there was uh, Ho Jose Torre, there was um, like just many. There was Abdullahi and Jai, there were so many of them, you know, amongst the, the, the ranks fighting for the cause, right? So a part of me would be down to do that. You know what I mean? A, a part of me would be down to fight like colonial par powers, you know what I mean? And um, not trying to be petty, you have to keep in mind that um, when Bolejo when Bolejo say, oh, you know, these uh, Tuvok, they're, they're killing us in our country and they're doing this and stuff like that, but they're quick to enlist in their army to go kill people who don't even, who never have done anything to them. Make it make sense, please. But anyhow, um, the thing is, is like Senegal has political and military ties with Russia. Um, it was one of the 17 African countries to abstain uh, from voting the March 2nd UN resolution condemning Russia's aggression, calling for an end to fighting. Algeria is another recipient of Russian military hardware and called on Ukraine from de to desist from trying to enlist fighters from his country. Um, 
uh, one guy, uh, one guy said um, that for uh, Jay said from for the past twenty or thirty years we have seen many recruiters who recruit young Africans to take them to play the role of mercenaries. Uh, Gay said, uh, adding the prosperity of economic gain easily lures young people. Um, social media has something to do with it too. You know, yeah. So I want to go to something else that the United uh, Snakes of America has not disclosed, and I'm surprised that they haven't really disclosed this. But you know, of course, you have to look at the quote-unquote bad guy for the information. But. Um, China asked the U.S. details on biolabs in Ukraine. The Chinese government demanded the U.S. release information about, um, about the U.S. Department of Defense biolabs operating in Ukraine. But guess what? The United States will, of course, deny this. And the mainstream media has, um, in, in fact, denied this as well. So um, just keep in mind that when they deny things like that, it usually means that they did it. So the Russian military forces operating in Kiev and Ukrainian authorities have been destroying pathogens studied at its 30 U.S. financed Ukrainian biolabs. Kiev denied the accusation that it was developing biological weapons. The U.S. Embassy in Ukraine stated through the website that the U.S. Department of Defense Biological Threat Reduction Program only collaborates with partner countries to counter the threat of outbreak and infectious diseases. On Tuesday, the Chinese Foreign Minister spoke uh, Zhao Lijian during a press conference to disclose that the laboratories in Ukraine are just a tip in the iceberg. According to China's government information, he added that the U.S. Department of Defense controls 336 biological laboratories in 30 countries around the world. Zhao said that cooperating to reduce biosecurity risks and strengthening global public health are the pretexts to use used by the U.S. government. We know that's a lie. Look at what they did in Puerto Rico and other places. You know there's such thing as biological colonialization as well as that environmental colonialization and you know the United States is masters of doing those things you know you know the, people will say that the United States is the best country in the world but look at what they do to become the best country of the world look at what look at all the other lives they put at misfortune to uh, become the best country in the world you know or labeled as the best country in the world the foreign minister disclosed the U.S. that the U.S. itself disclosed that there are 26 U.S. laboratories placed in Ukraine. <clears throat> in particular, the United States, as the party which knows the laboratories best, should publish the relevant details as possible, including which viruses are stored and which research has been carried out, he said. The minister stated that the White House has been inter interfering with verification mechanisms, behavior that, according to Zhao, will further aggravate the concerns of the internal community. The Real Times reported that the U U.S. Embassy in Ukraine eliminated all information about the Pentagon financed bio labs. The country from the, uh, in the country from its website on February 26, according to a reporter. The embassy left a document showing that the Pentagon is funding two new bio labs in Kiev and Odessa. Ukraine has no control over the bio labs. The Ukrainian government is not allowed to release this inf uh, information about the program, stated the Brazilian news outlet. So, in the nutshell, Ukraine has been um, is kind of slowly becoming a U.S. like a Extended U.S. colony in the the uh, Soviet region, you know, slowly but surely. Um, 
I've been called uh, imperialist because of my stance um, in regards to this conflict, you know. I don't support Ukraine and my, due to my family's political history and things like that, I am very much uh, leaning towards the side of Russia. And also it has, you shouldn't mix politics and religion together, but also I know a lot of Chechnyan people who are of, um, who are Muslim and who have a, a solid line. You know what I mean? And I I as well know a lot of Kazakh people who are um, Muslim who um, actually support the, the, who actually want to see the old uh, socialist bloc come back. So with that being said, it's more of the dirty games of the United States of America that they don't want you to know. And that, um, that, you know, it's there. It's there. But anyhow, man, foolish signing out. Leave your thoughts in your comments. I'm John Ramon.